How are we doing? Good. 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 You're, you're in your first week with the team. Uh, what are some of the uh, first impressions you've seen with the guys? Really good. Um, it's what I expected in terms of the, the group mentality. It's uh, You can tell there's good bonds within the players. Um, <clears throat> there's intensity. There's technical quality. Uh, there's fight. And, and that's a great foundation. So, you know, it's important for me coming in to preserve that, to respect it and and to know that it, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be in our foundation. For me, it's the next step is how do you take this group that I believe has high potential and how do you help lead it, pull it, push it, whatever you want to call it, support it, encourage it um, to create our, an identity, our identity for the club on and off the field. How we're going to act, how we're going to play. That's important that it's all in line with our identity, um, our values, our beliefs. And, you know, the objectives are clear, right? Every team wants to make the playoffs. Every team wants to win the MLS Cup. It's, it's no different than our objectives. Uh, where we have the opportunity is to create an identity that focuses on the why and the, and the how we do things that can be different than the rest and allow us to do those things in terms of the what. And it's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna be a, a battle every day. Uh, but the, the start of the week is really positive. Guys are working hard, they're competing, they're open for feedback. We did video this morning, they were really open. But you also saw progress in one week, not even a week, four days. You saw progress and, and that progress is gonna have setbacks, that progress is gonna have challenges. But as long as we know if we, we want to get better every day and we, and we work together that, that we'll always get back up and, and move forward. So I'm excited for these preseason games. MLS competition. We said we wanted to play MLS teams. We're going to play six. And some can go our way, some may not. We might have our full squad. We might be missing guys from the national team. We could still be missing guys that we acquire before the season starts. So there's still things that could happen that are not over the line. And do they happen? Do they not? Of course, I'm involved in that process, but my main focus is the daily training, the environment that we try to provide at a high level with our staff and our players to work. And say, if we had a game tomorrow with our current team, that we're, we're confident we can win that game, no matter what. So, Coach, how much did you bring, how much will you be bringing from your experience over at the World Cup? Yeah, a lot, a lot. You know, and I was in Dallas for 10 years. I, um, I learned a lot. I had my ups and downs, but but uh, certainly gave me a foundation of development and competing. And then with the national team, right? I was never an assistant in MLS. In fact, I was never an assistant in any level of my coaching. I was always a head coach or a director, or head coach and director. And I did that in MLS. And so just to be an assistant at the, at the national team level, to learn from Greg, learn from the staff, learn from these high-level American players, the best in our country, it just helped me um, reevaluate how I my process my again my game model my values my training methodology and implementing culture and style of play on and off the field and and uh, to me that that was an that was an opening eye opening experience learning from like I said the national team and doing it under high pressure and then doing it with high talent because people look at our talent and that team and you assume these huge egos but working with some of these players that play for Chelsea play for Leeds play for Juventus, <clears throat> these are human beings with big hearts and they're team guys. And and it just makes you realize it doesn't, you know, you can, why can't you implement that at any level, club level? Uh, and, and why can't we do that here in MLS? Why can't we do that, you know, in the San Jose way? So I definitely want to take what I learned with US, my past before that, um, but want to do it to the best of my ability, best, best that I ever have and best that this club has. It has a legacy. This club has big legacy 20 years ago. And I know it well because I played with those guys, and I, and I don't forget that. And I, I think, I will always owe it to them, and always be uh, on a mission to prove, to, to prove to our fan base and to those those ex players that made this club really proud that we want to also do the same, but in our in our, in our own way, in a new way, in a changed way, uh, which I know they're gonna. Uh, I hope that they will support over time. So we're gonna work towards that. Talking about <laughs> building an identity, what do you want that identity to be tactically on the field? Do you have a system 
in mind already that you're trying to implement or are you getting to know the guys and then figuring out what yeah it's, it's both okay. it's it's me taking this position knowing what we have in the roster and believing um, in the clear way I see the game that this team can execute that now there needs to be tactical flexibility the league home and away there's a lot of travel there's different um, climate things to adjust to and, and there's challenges right that the charter flighting flying coming back the same night so every team has these same challenges. The investment of the different teams, <coughs> we have a great foundation that I believe will instill a style of play that it, it needs to have verticality. It needs to break lines. It needs to get in behind the last line. It needs to attack the box. Um, so there needs to be a confident on the, confidence on the ball, a collective possession to attract, have connections to attract in a structure with positions, and timed movement to break lines, get in behind the last line. But within that structure, it's really important in the loss of possession. There's an immediate press, you know, there's an immediate recovery behind the ball centrally. So if you do things in a structure with the ball to build and you lose the ball, you can use that same structure to stay organized so you don't concede in defensive transition. That's work. That's right now it's talk, but now we're, we're trying to work on the field to implement that. And I'll say this, it's possession will be important. Attracting to break lines and attack will be important. But to me, it's not as important as creating goal scoring opportunities. So. It's really important our boys know we're not satisfied in a game unless we're scoring more opportunities than the opponent. We're scoring more chances um, on goal and conceding less. And that's more important than any uh, sequence of possession. And so that's, that's important that we get that out of the way so that we know that verticality is going to be um, something we're going to work really hard at. So how's the defense looking? Troco and Carlos, all those guys. Yeah, they're working hard. You know, Carlos is still getting a rhythm. He hasn't played a, a pro game in like six months because of his injury. So he's got physical pieces, tools that are that are fantastic. He just needs work. He needs to get fitness. He needs to get confidence on the ball. Um, and, and so he's going to be in there in the competition. But we have returning guys. I got a lot of experience last year with Paul. Um, you know, Tom, I think Tommy has versatility. You know, don't forget he also played in the midfield once upon a time. Did a good job. So he's going to have that. You'll have that utility hat, um, but you have a uh, Trauco that, that's, you know, again, learning about the league, high quality on the ball, is, is uh, working hard to get his fitness at the right level for the league, and, but he's, he's a great mentality. He's got a great way in the locker room. He's got a lot of experience. you got young Keegan, who's now in competition with the group, and you got the back line with Nathan Rodriguez, who I think ended the season, you know, with more connectivity, with more clarity. It wasn't, you know, they made, Rodriguez and, and Nathan made their mistakes, but you need to make those in the league and have a year behind you to then get better. Now they have more experience. They're MLS players, and we're working in a way that I think can help keep them organizing themselves, the team, so that we can defend better collectively. And then it's the same as the midfield. So, you know, all those levels defensively are, that we, we know need to improve for us to, to earn more points. But we also want to maintain how we attack, so we don't want to lose that balance. So, But yeah, in preseason, we've made a priority of not just building with verticality, not just trying to attack, but having a defensive organization. Pressing is going to be important to us, but it's not about just high pressing the entire time. Let's get in a good midfield, sorry, mid block organization. And from there, what are our triggers to, to try to win the ball? Where, how do we win the, win the ball? And then there'll be moments where you can be really aggressive high and there'll be moments we'll be low, but organizing it, giving it a language, giving it an identity and the players uh, working hard to, to understand it and, and to implement it and, and be proud of it. So that's, that's going to be a lot of work. But you, one of the biggest challenges the new coach brings in is getting the players to be accountable. So <laughs> what, what's your, I guess, plan for holding these mm -hmm. players accountable throughout the season starting now and here in training camp? Yeah, so first starts with myself as the coach. You know, I need to mirror our staff. We need to mirror accountability. Like human beings, it's, it's, uh, it's the mirror effect. You know, when you're around someone long enough, you, you tend to kind of copy their, their habits. If you, if you even an accent, uh, a body language thing, you know. So, so we want to mirror that as a, we want to model that as a staff, so that the players can mirror. We want to show that that we are better together as a staff. We want to show that every day uh, we want to get better. We want to show that we respond to adversity with our anchors. We want to show an intensity and a relentlessness in our training, in our preparation. We want to be prepared. We want to make plans. And if they and if if things don't go the way we want, we want to make a better plan. And if we model that as a staff, I think the players, I believe they take that on. They become the personality as us as, 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 as a staff. So it starts with myself, and that's all I can control right now. And, but I do believe through that process, 
players will, will continue to, 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 to do it in their own way, but, but them collectively will move in the right direction. Is that why you're running the liners out there? <laughs> you know, I need it for myself. It's, it was a quick eight-minute workout. I don't know if you time you're not. Seven minutes and 45 seconds. But, you know, I've got to be active too. I, why, you know, I, I believe in that. I, I want to stay active. I think it's healthy for me to, if they, if they see me or observe it, that's up to them. I don't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. But, um, and don't get me wrong, it's a honeymoon phase. We'll see what staff is <laughs> over me in two weeks, right, Jake? I'm going to have to recruit Jake. Um, but, Chris will be there. But it's about setting the tone, setting the tone, and then we'll get into our natural rhythm. But, um, you know, I, got, I learned a lot, guys, in the last few years, a lot. And um, no excuses. Like I need, to, I want to bring my best. I want to challenge myself and the staff to bring a high performance, high standards for the group. And and I think that's the best way we can let them come alive. And you know what? Whether we uh, we make playoffs or not, or we win an MLS Cup or not, I believe doing these things give us a better chance to do those things. But whether we do it or not, I'm going to go to sleep okay, knowing that, that that was the right way. That is, that to me, is the right way to do it. So, yeah. Coach, uh, last uh, question. We got um, to cut it up. Yeah. yeah. I'll answer one more. One more. Okay. Okay. You play LF, L, LAFC over at the uh, Levi's, and that's also going to be a site of the World <laughs> Cup uh, in three years. Yeah. So, how excited are you about that, being at that field, and will you have any involvement during the World Cup, uh, even though you're the coach here? <laughs> uh, look, that game is quite a bit of ways. Um, it's important to me that I look at the next step in front of me. Okay. Uh, the horizon is there, you know, we, but there's thousands of steps before that. So, you know, preseason is number one, and Atlanta is number two, getting ready for Atlanta. But but when that game co does come, it'll be awesome. Uh, you know the environment's going to be great. Being in a World Cup venue, I'll take a lot of personal pride in that. Um, but when that time comes, we'll, we'll certainly be excited. Okay.